Yo guys, what is going on? It is Invin here, and today what I'm bringing to you guys is a video on some of the top things from the New World April update, which dropped today at the time of recording, that you may not have noticed. Now, this video is not going to contain anything absolutely show-stopping. However, it is going to provide you guys with a good little insight into some of the more smaller details from this update, particularly in the region of the QOL, the quality of life updates that we saw, as there was plenty of them to go around, and actually, some of them were pretty cool. Now, before we fully jump into today's video, if you haven't already done so and you'd like to see more New World content from the channel, please do be sure to go down below and press the subscribe button with the notification bell on so that you don't miss out on any uploads. And if you do go on to enjoy the video, do make sure to drop a like down below as well, as both of those things massively help to support me and my content here on the channel and without further ado let's jump into it so the first thing that we are looking at here then is the updated map ui as you can see along the left hand side here some very smart looking new buttons and more specifically the territory standing tab now this one by default is now grayed out if you do not have any upgrades and it will just simply be gray when you hover over it now when you actually level up a territory standing point in the respective area that you're in in. This will go yellow, whether it be a small yellow icon here or the entire bar will be coloured like the manage objective one is right now. And it will also show a red number with one, two, three, four, depending how many levels you actually have available to level up, which is a pretty nice cleanup of the UI, makes it much more accessible and much more clearly visible when you have an upgrade to obtain. You will also see that now when you are in game, if you press M, you will automatically be zoomed into the settlement or outpost settlement that you are currently in. This is an automatic feature and of course you are able to zoom out as normal. If you do zoom out, do bear in mind that until you re-enter that settlement or enter a different one, by default when you open the map it will still be zoomed out. However, this does make it much easier and convenient when you go into a new settlement or a settlement that you want to travel to, to be able to see where each of the quest markers are, where each of the crafting or refining stations are and indeed where each of the faction representatives are. As well as if you're in a party, you'll much more easily be able to see your friends on the map as soon as you pull this up, which is a great little addition to the game and something I have found to be very useful even in the few hours that I've been playing it so far. There is a new keybind which is defaulted to I, which if you press you will see comes up with this one. This is where it opens the map with the objectives tab open. And it's great for tracking quests, particularly through the leveling phases, but even at end game, as you can see here, I've got all of my repeatable ones up the top, and then you can see in different locations locations, ones without specific locations, then ones with, and it starts with distance closest first. You can swap this to type, territory, or easiest first in terms of difficulty. Then you can go through these, see all your town board quests, all of the quests that you have active with their appropriate level, and of course what type of quests they are, so the faction ones will have a little faction emblem in the corner of them as well, which is pretty cool and is much easier to nicely be able to bring this up and see what it is that you are planning to do next. There is a new section in the key binding section of the settings tab for specifically the life staff combat. I have shown this in a video before, so I'm just going to briefly go over it. But essentially, if you have 84 hands and 16 mice, you will be able to now assign a button and keybind for each group member as well as a toggle group mode of healing. In all seriousness, though, this is a really cool thing and it does allow the healers to have much more fluid access over their group when they are healing, which is a much, much better way of doing it and gives them a nice bit of access if they've got the appropriate buttons that they want to find out. I don't know what you guys want to do with that one, but it is pretty cool and it does give you that option should you wish to try it out, which should make it easier. One thing I know a lot of players are doing is just putting like group member one or group member two on specific key bindings and hoping that they can rearrange their parties to get their tank always in that one or two spot so it's much easier. But again, there's going to be different ways to do this, but it is a really nice addition to the game. The next one here then is when you go into a town, you will no longer get the tax information pop up. As you can see on screen now, it just shows you Winswood Capital and the earning current company. It does not show you all of the tax information and breakdown, which makes the UI much, much cleaner. And this is the same when you teleport into a settlement as well so it does mean that you're not going to see that pop up on screen but like I said in yesterday's video do be aware of changing taxes and you might want to go into your map scroll out a little bit and just have a look at some of the numbers there to make sure that you're 
be on top of what you're paying in each settlement. When you are in your inventory, you can no longer right click on an item to bring up the menu that we had. Instead, if you hover over it, you will see these by default. It will tell you exactly what the keybinds are for each thing, as well as the ability to change skin. If you just left click on it, it opens up this full menu and then you can click onto each of these or use again the appropriate keybind or combination of buttons and clicks to be able to perform your actions there. But instead of right clicking, this should make the UI work a lot smoother, which again is a pretty cool quality of life little update. Additionally to this in the inventory, you will now see the brand new Arcana tab. Previously, this was Alchemy and Arcana, but it has now been standardized to just be Arcana as that is the representative skill. If we go into the skills menu, you guys will see it is just called Arcana up the top here. So it makes a little bit more sense to be consistent throughout and is now much more new player friendly to be able to see which ingredients will be used for that skill. Now further with these trade skills, as you guys can see, when you do get trade skill aptitudes anywhere from level 200 and beyond, when you used to enter an OPR, an expedition, an arena, anything like that, you would get a pop-up of about 685,000 different messages telling you about your trade skill aptitudes. Now, you should no longer get those when you go in, which is a huge, huge bonus. And on a similar trail of thought to that, going into the bio section here then, we should no longer see the achievements and therefore title unlocks popping up every single time we log in or do something new again. Again, now it has reset my title, so it may well have done the same for a lot of you guys. And as you can see, my titles are not currently here right now, so this seems to be a little bit of an issue. But other than that, once this is fixed, we shouldn't be seeing those pop up every single time, which is a really, really good change. I just hope that at some point my titles do come back. As it says, I've currently got one selected, but also no title. So we'll have to wait and see with that one. We've also got a big welcome back to say to the top right hand section of Shattered Mountains and Eden's Grove. As a lot of you will be aware, this section was kind of unrendered on the map and pixelated and just kind of blurred out essentially for some reason at different zoom variations. Now that area has come back successfully, which is just a nice, again, tiny little feature that's changed but it is again much nicer for the player's experience now like again i mentioned in yesterday's video but especially looking at the tempest heart the end game expeditions no longer have those easy access cheese strategies whether you use them for saving time or because you found the expeditions a little bit difficult either way these are no longer the case of course until some pesky players come along and find out a new method but all of the really easy ways to avoid damage or avoid aggro have now been fixed so you will have to get some practice in doing these dungeons and and expeditions in full to be ahead of the game because some of these can be pretty challenging looking specifically at the Tempest Heart. Now the blunderbuss has had its refreshing move drop chance completely got rid of so in other words you can no longer get refreshing move on the blunderbuss and as you guys will be able to see for yourselves if you come into the game you are not able to select it as a craft mod when making a blunderbuss therefore there is going to be no more refreshing move on the blunderbuss and that is essentially because it was deemed to be too OP so say goodbye to the those and onto the next step of the blunderbuss domination in pvp now finally here we've seen of course a lot of bug fixes and stability updates which again in my few hours of playing this since the update so far has actually been pretty decent it does seem to be a lot smoother but it is still early doors so i'll give you guys an overall review and kind of feedback on that in a few days time once i've had a chance to properly test this out in all aspects of the game but it does seem to be a lot more smooth running overall there does seem to be way less friction in trying to access the content that you want and the quality of life updates that I have mentioned in today's video are very very nice indeed and have certainly been appreciated by myself and a lot of other players so far which is really really cool. Now if there is anything that I didn't include in this video that you also think is a really cool QOL update from this April update then do be sure to drop that in the comments down below as well but other than that that is going to be it for today's video guys so I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, don't forget to drop me a like and a subscribe down below. As like I said at the start, both of those things massively help to support my content here on the channel. So that would be much, much appreciated. And if you want to go that extra step and support me directly as a content creator, you can join the membership for the channel underneath as well on today's video, should you wish to do so. But other than that, that is going to be it for today. So I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. And I will catch you again very, very shortly on a brand new upload. Take care, guys, and peace.